So we're going to begin with our Algebra 1 Keystone exam review. We are going to be utilizing the 2023-2024 released items. And the first two questions we're going to go over are questions 1 and 2 from Module 1. So please watch this video for some guidance and to help you figure out how we would approach these problems. This is going over a couple of things in problem one. We have square roots, we have something squared, and we have an inequality sign. Your best bet in a problem like this, when they're asking you um, what are, here's the keyword here, what are all of the values of A that will make this inequality true? First of all, if they're asking for a statement like all, chances are it's more than just one number, um, but they're giving you little ranges. And so your best bet is to use your calculator and plug some numbers in, pick a value for A within each range and see, okay, is it true for this? Is it true for this? Because it has to be true for all values in that range of values. So um, first of all, we have a square root. So we're taking a square root and then that greater than symbol. So I did just put a little review of your four inequality signs. So greater than, um, I wanted to point out, is different than greater than or equal to. So I couldn't say five is greater than five um, because they're equal. So if I had five, over here in the bottom there, if I had five is greater than five, that's not a true statement, right? It's not bigger than five. It's exactly equal to. So you would need that line underneath there. And that's going to come up when we plug one of these values in. And then you have your less than and less than or equal to. So what I would do is I'm looking at these choices and you have two A values that are specific when A is zero and A is one, there's no range. So I would go right away and I would plug zero and one in and see if I can eliminate them. We consistently talk about the ability to eliminate at least half of our choices pretty easily. And so here, if I take the square root of zero and I'm going to compare it to zero squared, hopefully you all know that the square root of zero is zero and that zero squared is zero. And this goes into that, um, what I was just talking about with the five. Zero is not greater than zero. Um, now, if that line was underneath there, um, making it greater than or equal to, then that would be a true statement. So that is not an accurate statement. So we can cross off option A. Um, we then have option D when we're plugging one in and we're gonna run into a similar situation. The square root of one versus one squared. The square root of one is just one and one squared is just one. Once again, not a true statement. One is not strictly greater than one. So right away we can eliminate those two specific quantities. And so you could think and understand, okay, what happens when I take a number greater than one and I take the square root of it versus when I square it? And you could do the same for a number between zero and one, a decimal, a fraction, something that is less than one, like 0.5 or 0.7, and you can think about it. Um, or you can just plug some values in. So if I take a number greater than one, I'm gonna work smarter here. And because I'm dealing with a square root, I'm gonna pick a number that I know is a perfect square. So I'm gonna pick nine, for example, and I'm gonna say, okay, the square root of nine, we wanna compare it to see if it's greater than nine squared. The square root of nine is three, and nine squared is 81. Now, if you did not know either of those, I did pull up the Desmos calculator. On the right-hand side here, that is the calculator that you will have access to on the Keystone exam if you do not have your own personal one. So three is not greater than 81. So that's gonna be true. If it's true for that value nine, it's gonna be true for all values greater than one. So whether I plug in 1.01 .01 or whether I pl plug in 1001, if I take the square root of it, it's going to be smaller than if I square it. So I can cross off option B. And honestly, by default, we see that option C is our uh, answer process of elimination there. If you wanted to double check the square root, I would pick something like 0.5 and I would compare it to 0.5 squared 
right? And just to show you how we can use that calculator here, you have that square root button, 0.5, and you get something wonky. You get 0 0.70. And if I clear that all, you can hit clear all. And then to square something on this calculator, you can hit 0.5. And then there's where that A squared button is. You can hit that. And you will see you get uh, 0 0.25. Right, and so clearly 0.7 is bigger than 0.25, right? So um, it would be true for all values that are bigger than zero, but smaller than one. So that's basically saying anything between zero and one, this statement would be true for. And so your best bet for a problem like that is to just take some values, pick something within each of those ranges and plug them into the statement. Okay. Something else reviewing or going over square roots was question two on this module one released questions. Um, and before we go over and solve this problem, we're going to just do a quick skill review of simplifying square roots. So how we simplify square roots, um, we found the most efficient way. Now there's more than one way, right? Is we do our prime factorization and we're looking for buddies things to bring out of the house, right? So we break 12 down and we say, okay, 12, two ways to break it down. You can break it down to be four times three. You can break it down to be uh, six times two. Now, some of you might know from here, okay, the square root of four is just two and you can say, okay, great. I know the square root of four is two, so that's gonna simplify to two root three. Or maybe you're someone who continued to break it down and you said, okay, four breaks down into two times two. And I always suggest once you break a number down to cross it out so you know you can't use that as a buddy. So as you see here, you have your group of twos that can buddy up. And so they're going to come out of the house or out of that radical. And then you have your lonely three that has no buddies. So that has to stay inside it cannot come out to play right so that's how we simplify square roots and if it was a cube root we would be looking for groups of three so on and so forth so what they're saying here is they gave you four options and they're saying which value a b c or d so they really just want you to do what we just did for root 12 for all four of those options and see which one's going to produce a buddy um, that you can bring outside of the house, right? So we want to be able to just have, we want to simplify all of these and see which one is just going to leave a three inside of the house, kind of just like that 12 just did. So what I would do right off the bat is clearly you know all of these or hopefully all of these are going to be divisible by three. So I'm going to take 48. And if you don't know what it is when you divide it by three, you use your calculator. Don't sweat it. So 48, if I take 48, let's go here. I'm going to see that it breaks up and we'll, we'll put the square root. Sorry. It breaks up into 16 times three. And I'm thinking, OK, great. Personally, I know 16 is a perfect square. If I didn't, I would say, OK, that's four and four maybe. And I would hopefully recognize, oh, wait, there's the buddies, right? And so right off the bat, I see that's going to simplify, right? I see buddies and maybe you broke that four or each of those fours down to two and two and you pulled two twos out, whichever works for you. And so you see, oh, look, here's the X and then you got the root three. And so right off the bat, you see option A works. Now I'm going to just double check and show you why option B, C, and D do not work, right? So we were able to simplify root 48 into something X root 3 because when we took 48 and we divided it by 3, it left us with 16, which is a perfect square. And so that X that comes out to the front would be a 4. Now if I go off of that, 51, I'm just going to go down below here, 51 breaks up into 17 times 3. Now, 17 does not break down any further, so I would have no buddies to come to the outside, right? 
And so for that problem, it doesn't simplify at all. The square root of 51 doesn't, can't break down any further or can't be for, further simplified. Now, if I continue and go with 54, that's going to be 18 times 3. Now I'm thinking, okay, great. I can break 18 to 9 times 2. And then I can say, ooh, this 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. And so I'm thinking, great, I have a buddy here. So that brings something on the outside. But notice there's two things without buddies. So that would leave me with a 2 times 3 on the inside, which is 6, okay? And remember, we want to simplify to just having a 3 on the inside. So that 54 isn't going to work out for us. Yes, it simplified further, but it did not leave us with the inside or... Um, the three under the radical like we wanted. And then last but not least, that 57 would be 19 times three. And 19 is prime, it does not break down any further. So therefore that square root of 57 cannot simplify further. So we lucked out and option A worked, but just to show you um, how B, C, and D would not work. So. That's our little review. Those first two problems use those skills of square roots. Um, and so just a little recap on that. Follow for more exciting keystone breakdowns.